The mainstream media, which I more I think accurately refer to as the left stream media, they're in meltdown mode this morning as White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer puts journalists and notice on notice and making sure the administration is covered fairly. The headlines this morning show the networks and newspapers they're not taking it very well. CNN saying, reality check, Sean Spicer hits the media over crowds. The Washington Post saying Sean Spicer held a press conference. He didn't take questions or tell the whole truth. And in the middle there, USA Today, on the second day, White House Press Secretary strikes so-called combative dark tone. Here to react, Washington Times columnist Kelly Riddell. Kelly, good morning. Uh, what good morning. do you make of the way that I'm, I would say the left stream media is reacting to Sean Spiker, Spicer's conference last night? Well, I mean, it was a very um, confident, direct press conference delivered by Sean Spicer. And it's basically putting the media on notice. If you're going to fact check us, we are going to fact check you every step of the way. And they had a lot of real grievances there. The whole report on uh, the removal of the MLK's bus from the Oval Office, that blew up on social media. And you had a bunch of responsible reporters retreating and kind of like making that story go viral. And it was completely on true it was just as it, the, the media so much wants to go against and report negative stories on Donald Trump that they're making things up so what Sean Spicer did last night was he said listen we're not gonna let you get away with this and I'll use this podium to go back with your to go back and fact check against your fake news sure so the media hitting hard and the media can't resist why could they always not resist <laughs> uh, comparing uh, folks to Nazi Germany or Hitler uh, the latest is ABC's Terry Moran uh, talking about Donald Trump's America first slogan take a listen People want to hear that a message of America first. However, it carries with it overtones from the 1930s when an anti-Semitic movement saying we don't want to get involved in Europe's war. It's the Jews' fault in Germany. The words themselves carry very ugly echoes in our history. It's the Jews' fault. I mean, seriously? Oh, my goodness. And then you had Chris Matthews on MSNBC after, immediately after Donald Trump's speech say that it was Hitlerian in its approach. And then you had very many newspapers, Washington Post, uh, basically reviving or recalling up its, uh, its story that he did on, on the ties of America first to Nazi Germany. Listen, Donald Trump said this very important thing in his speech. When you open your heart to patriotism, there yeah. is no room for prejudice. The Bible tells us how good and pleasant it is when God's people live in unity. Now, this is something that would never be in a Hitler speech. And it was now, never... Also, and, and it was never, not emphasized on places oh, like ABC. Oh, absolutely not. You know whose bus was returned to the, to the Oval Office? Winston Churchill. Yeah. Who got rid of the Nazis? Winston Churchill. Do you know what a John McCain campaign slogan was in 2008? I it sure was do. country first. Country first. So, I, I mean, I don't know why there wasn't an uproar back then about this. Well, there, there wasn't because they were not unhinged about the movement that was being <laughs> exactly. built by someone who's playing politics differently than anyone else ever has and making them more irrelevant than they've ever been because you can go over the top of them and speak directly to the people. Kelly Riddell, thank you for speaking to the people this morning from <laughs> The Washington Times. Appreciate it.